In this video, there's a minimum of 75 Bible verses with prophecies and Bible codes that prove a flat geostationary Earth. I've grouped most of these verses into groups of three, so I'm going to be counting down from 25 to 1. It'll make sense to you in a minute. Uh, and I've saved the best two for last. So let's start with some easy ones. Number 25, Corners. Isaiah 11, verse 12, four corners of the earth. Revelation 7, verse 1, four corners of the earth. Revelation 20, verse 8, the four corners of the earth. You can't have corners on a sphere. That's because the earth is not a sphere. It's flat. Number 24, still earth. Uh, 1 Chronicles 16, verse 30, the world also shall be stable that it be not moved. Psalm 96 verse 10, the world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. Psalm 93 verse 1, the world also is established that it cannot be moved. It's all consistent, clear as day. If the world isn't moving, then it's not spinning and neither is it orbiting around the sun. Number 23, pillars. 1 Samuel 2 verse 8, for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. Job 9 verse 6, and the pillars thereof tremble. Psalm 75 verse 3, I bear up the pillars of it. There's nothing about a ball-shaped earth that you can fit pillars into. That's because the earth is not round, the pillars hold up a flat earth, there's a dome on top, the earth is flat. Number 22, the firmament dome. Isaiah 24 verse 18, for the windows of heaven are opened. It's a dome over a flat earth. Isaiah 13, verse 13. Therefore, I will make the heavens tremble. If the heavens can tremble, then it has to have solidity to it. Genesis 1, verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. It's a dome over a flat earth that separates the waters above the dome. I read this so many times and I didn't see what was going on. I read the word firmament, didn't understand it, but it makes so much sense now when you take it literally. Strong's Concordance defines the word firmament as a solid expanse, roughly like the domed roof on this building here. Here's the inside of that dome, and the stars that we see in the sky would be fixed into this solid firmament. And the whole thing rotates around a flat stationary earth. That's why all the stars move around the sky together as one set piece. Because you can only have a solid dome separating the waters above from the waters and seas below on a flat earth with the atmosphere in the middle. It doesn't work on a ball-shaped earth. Number 21, the firmament dome continued. Isaiah 44, verse 24, I am the Lord who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. Well, you can't spread something out by rolling it into a ball. Uh, Psalms 18, verse 9, He bowed the heavens also. Second uh, Samuel 22, verse 10, repeats Psalms. It says, He bowed the heavens also. Strong's number H5186 describes the word bowed as bend. The heavens bend around us. It's a domed heaven around a flat earth. Number 20, the sun. There are 67 Bible verses that reference the sun moving. You can easily look this up. Uh, here's a title on one website that lists them all. But zero, zilch, nothing, no Bible verses at all that ever make reference to the earth moving. So at the very least, the Bible supports a geostationary earth. Number 19, Bible codes. If you're familiar with Bible codes, then you'll know there's a matrix of flat earth clusters from Luke 13, verse 28 to Luke 14. Here's the matrix. Here's flat, earth, and an equidistant letter spacing. You'll also find dome, canopy, tent, truth, edge, disc, even, and a lot more. If you don't have Bible code software, then you can do this for free at biblecodewisdom.com. Number 18, height and depth. Job 11, verse 8. It is as high as heaven. What can you do? Deeper than hell. What can you know? 
So there's a height to heaven and a depth to hell. You can't have a height to heaven on a heliocentric, ever-expanding universe model. You can only have a height to heaven on a flat earth that has a dome over the top of it. Number 17, length and width. Job 11 verse 9, the measure thereof is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. It doesn't say longer than the sphere and broader than the curved ocean. You can't have a length and breadth on a ball unless you change the wording of the Bible to accommodate it. You can only have a length and breadth on a flat level plane. Number 16, wisdom. Colossians 2 verse 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. 1 Timothy 6 verse 20, false science. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 19, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. A ball-shaped world is wisdom to those that live in the world and get their information from TV or the education system. Uh, wisdom of a global earth is literally foolishness with God. True wisdom is not taught in the education system and neither will you find it on the six o'clock news. True wisdom is only found by carefully weighing up the options and that's what we've been doing on this channel for the last few months, weighing up the evidence. Really try to understand what the Bible is saying here in these three verses because it's telling us that the earth is flat, it's not round. Number 15, day and night. Job 26 verse 10, he has compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end. Well, that's interesting. Here's a flat earth map. The outer bounds are made of ice. The waters are literally compassed with an ice boundary. The sun goes around the earth like this. Both day and night can only come to an end where day and night meet the dome. Beyond the dome, time ceases to exist. Whoever happens to live in that realm outside the dimension of time, beyond the dome, uh, which is the heaven, is also immortal. He's always been there. He can see the beginning and the end. Prophecies in the Bible inspired by the Holy Spirit show us the future is already foretold. And when the Bible talks of the everlasting, that's the place we all go to at some point. Problem is... Most of us who reject the truth will face everlasting shame. Like it or not, we're all going to meet our maker someday. So day and night can't possibly come to an end on a ball earth model. That's because the earth isn't a ball, the earth is flat. Number 14, foundations. Job 38 verse 4, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you have understanding. As we've just seen, the foundations of the earth are pillars. Isaiah 48 verse 13, my hand also has laid the foundation of the earth and my right hand has spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. If the heavens stand up at his command, then it's telling us here that the heavens are a dome. It's a solid dome. The earth is flat. Number 13, footstool. Isaiah 66 verse 1, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Matthew 5 verse 35, he's swearing, nor by earth, for it is his footstool. Acts 7 verse 49, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. This is what a footstool looks like. It's got four pillars. Here's another one. How exactly are you mistaking this for this? What footstool spins at a thousand miles an hour? Number 12, desktop globe, Exodus 20 verse 4, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath. Isaiah 42 verse 8, Neither my praise to graven images. It's also the second of the Ten Commandments, so that rules out having a spinning globe on your desktop, because what's a spinning globe? It's a graven image that depicts the earth. Why was the commandment not to have those things? Because it indoctrinates without even speaking. The earth isn't a globe, it's flat. Number 11, the stars. Matthew 24, verse 29. The stars shall fall from heaven. 
Mark 13, verse 25, and the stars of heaven shall fall. Revelation 6, verse 13, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth. We've all been brainwashed into thinking the stars are massive and trillions of miles away. The Bible is telling us the stars are not massive, they're small, close, and they're going to fall to the earth. So the universe that we see up there is dome-shaped and small enough to contain all the stars that circle around the flat stationary earth. Number 10, the universe. This is the ancient Hebrew view of the universe. We've got the earth on pillars, Sheol down there, and a dome over the flat geostationary earth and all the stars and the sun and the moon inside the dome going around the earth that's why in Genesis 1 verse 14 it says let there be lights in the firmament of heaven not orbiting a Milky Way galaxy no inside the dome the firmament number nine Sun circuit Psalm 96 verse 10 the world also shall be established that it shall not be moved King James Version. Equally, that verse could support a ball-shaped Earth, but it eliminates the possibility of the Earth going around the Sun. Bear that in mind for a moment. Psalm 19, verse 6, talking about the Sun. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit until the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. If the Sun has a circuit, then the Sun is not the centre of the solar system, as we've been told. Critics will say, ah, Yes, but the sun is on a circuit. It circles the centre of our Milky Way galaxy. Well, if the Earth is established that it cannot be moved, but the sun goes around the Milky Way, then the sun would fly off away from the Earth and we'd never see the sun again. So when the Bible talks of the sun having a circuit, it's talking about the sun circuiting around a flat Earth. Number eight circle of the earth so those who loosely read the bible point to isaiah 40 verse 22 which says it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth and they use that verse to support a round earth but there is a difference between a sphere and a circle isaiah knew the difference between a ball and a circle because he describes a ball in isaiah 22 verse 18 so why did isaiah not use the same word for ball when describing the earth in chapter 40 that's because the earth is not a ball it's a flat disc shape with a dome on top and pillars underneath number seven grasshoppers Psalm 33, verse 14, from the place of his uh, habitation, he looks upon the inhabitants of the earth. You can't do that on a 13.8 billion light year across the universe. It's a dome. Isaiah 40, verse 22, it is he that sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. If you're outside the expanding heliocentric universe, then we wouldn't resemble grasshoppers. The entire galaxy would resemble a speck. It's a dome over a flat earth. Number six, deception. Matthew 24, verse 24. If it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. Ephesians 5, verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. So, if you are deceived about the ball-shaped earth, thinking a sphere is the truth, then you've got no chance of ever being able to understand the Bible, yourself barred from all knowledge. If you take the view that the flat earth is a distraction, then what exactly is it distracting you from? What, celebrity gossip? Uh, or if you believe it doesn't matter if the earth is round or flat, then you're a self-confessed idiot, because... It absolutely does matter if the earth is flat or round. You'll never be able to understand the Bible at all if you think the flat, round earth is a distraction or doesn't matter. Number five, tent. If we go back to Isaiah 40, verse 22, and expand on it, it sa if you remember, it says, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreads them out, as a tent to dwell in. Here's a picture of my tent. I went camping in it a month ago. How exactly are you confusing a tent, a dome-like structure, for an expanding universe 13.8 billion light years across? They don't match up. Again, 
this verse gives credence to the fact that it's a flat earth with a dome-like structure above. Number four, ends of the earth. Job 37, verse 3, and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. Daniel 4, verse 11, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. Proverbs 30, verse 4, who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if you can tell? <laughs> wow. Wow. Proverbs is Old Testament, and what a prophecy that is. Not only is it predicting Jesus, the Son of God, but also the ends of a flat, level earth. There's no end on a ball-shaped earth. It goes around continuously. You can only come to an end on a flat, level plane. Number three, lies. Jeremiah 16, verse 19. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Surely... Our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. This is a future prophecy following a monstrous destruction of people who believed lies. But it could just as easily apply now, today. Here we are today showing evidence of the ends of the earth, telling people the earth is flat, and the generation who lived from the 1930s until now got lied to. The generation above us inherited lies, and those who stand for nothing will believe anything. There's no end to the earth on a ball. That's because it's not a ball, it's flat. Number two, the four winds. The Bible is consistent all the way through from Old to New Testament that there's four winds. For example, Jeremiah 49 verse 36, four winds. Daniel 7 verse 2, four winds. Matthew 24 verse 31, four winds. Revelation 7 verse 1, four winds. If you've got understanding, you'll know there's a jet stream that connects North America with Europe. Commercial aircraft try to fly in the jet stream to conserve fuel. Do some diligent research and you'll find there's um, four jet streams, two in the north and two in the southern hemisphere. So how did the guys who penned the Bible know about these four jet streams when they were only discovered in the 1920s when planes could finally fly high enough to discover them. So we have a dome-shaped earth that requires uh, cross ventilation. Okay, so here's an example of cross ventilation. Here's my here's my boiler in there and you've got to have two ventilations uh, one at the top and one at the bottom. It's not sufficient to just have one because that wouldn't circulate the air through. You've got to have uh, two for sufficient ventilation. If you want to properly ventilate your roof to prevent dry rot or wet rot, you'll need a minimum of two vents, one here and one here. But if you want to ventilate the entire earth, then you'll need inlets of air and outlets. That's why in Revelation 7 verse 1 it says, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind would blow on the earth, or on the sea, or on any tree. And the picture you see on screen is a graphical representation of the four angels on the four corners of the earth. Each of them would feed in a jet stream of air into the dome a bit like a leaf blower to cross ventilate the entire earth. Jet streams wouldn't work on a ball shaped earth because they'd fizzle out to nothing very quickly. The only way I can visualize a jet stream working is to feed that jet stream somehow into the system by an inlet. It's impossible to replicate a, a constant fast flowing column of air on a ball earth without something feeding that air into the system. Scientists will try and make out the case that hot and cold air colliding will cause a jet stream, but I think that's unlikely. So that brings us to the number one reason, and that is mathematics. Uh, in Psalm 147 verse 5, it's referring uh, to the Almighty, it says, His understanding is infinite, and if we get to Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning God created the heaven, singular, and the earth. 
What you're about to see is approximately 20 seconds of complicated stuff. Just follow along as best you can here for 20 seconds because this will knock your socks off. In Hebrew, the first sentence of the Bible looks like this. If you take the number of Hebrew letters and times that by the product of the letters and then divide that by the number of words times the product of the words, you get 3.1416. That's the value of pi to four decimal places. Pi is the relationship of a circle's circumference to its diameter, so you measure the circumference of any circle all the way round and divide that by the diameter straight across, and you get 3.14, the value of pi, an infinite string of numbers. OK, that's the complicated stuff over. What the Bible is describing here is clearly a circle and not a sphere. And only... A flat geostationary circular Earth fits that description. And if that failed to knock your socks off, then you've not been paying attention. Because what we've got here is the Bible describing the creation of the Earth in words, and behind those words we've got a mathematical formula that not only verifies the authenticity of the text, a fingerprint of God if you will, but it describes the very shape of the Earth, circular. In the future I might post a video just on this subject alone, or I might write a book on the subject, or I might correspond with and collaborate with people who care. Uh, there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. And finally, Luke 18 verse 17, For nothing is hid that shall not be made manifest, nor anything secret that shall not be known and come to light.